work on the new enormous seven platform 400 meter long station being constructed in Birmingham city centre officially began last week. I was fortunate enough to be invited to a brief ceremony to mark the occasion which was attended by the mayor of the West Midlands, Andy Street. Although it wasn't a groundbreaking ceremony as such, with work already having started, it did give members of the media a chance to take a look at the huge site that will eventually be home to the new Curzon Street station. The site isn't quite yet a hive of activity, with the majority of the works still ongoing on Curzon Street number 3 viaduct, which will bring trains into the station. I'll be talking much more about that in a separate video, so keep an eye out for that. The work currently being carried out by the Maestro Baldos joint venture who are delivering the station currently appears to be limited to preparing for piling to commence. Towards what will be the western concourse, workers are building a pad which will be used during piling work. Once the piles have been completed, the temporary pad will be excavated to expose the top of the pile which will in effect also form one of the piers. The height of the station from the point where it crosses New Canal Street begins to decrease until the platforms reach the western end of the station, at which point they'll be at ground level. The concourse will however be above the platform levels, with lifts and escalators taking passengers down to the platforms from the main concourse, which will be covered by an impressive arched roof. It's difficult to get across just how big the station will be, but I'm told the top of the roof will be the same height as the Clayton Hotel building, which is adjacent to the site. The platforms will extend from the western entrance, which will be next to Birmingham Moor Street Station, to the approach viaduct, which is also known as Curzon No. 3 Viaduct. The ends of the four individual spans, which form part of No. 3 Viaduct, marks the boundary between the work to build the approach, which is being delivered by a Balfour BT Vinci joint venture, and the Maestro Gardos work site. BBV has a deadline of summer this year to complete the western end of the viaduct, so Maestro Gardos can begin work on the station, which will tie in with the viaduct. Part of the station will rest on V-shaped piers, which are similar to those used for the viaduct, but more conventional piers will be used as the platforms approach ground level. The station itself will soar above New Canal Street, which closed to pedestrians last year, and along which trams will eventually run to Digbeth. I am hoping to visit Birmingham again within the next few months to take a look at the tram extension progress, so keep an eye out for that video. With Maestro Gardos having to build a new station above New Canal Street, it will mean that the land won't be handed to contractors working on the tram extension until 2026. This will mean unfortunately that trams won't begin operating to Digbeth until 2027. However, construction of a temporary stop close to Moore Street Queensway was approved last year. So trams should at least begin to operate on part of the new extension by 2025 or 2026 which will provide connectivity with Moore Street as well as serving the university. I know I've approached this subject before, but I want to talk briefly about New Street before I wrap this video up. People still comment that building a new station underneath New Street Station would have been a much better idea, and whilst it's difficult to disagree in principle, it's just not realistic. The challenges faced by engineers who are delivering the new surface station are tough enough, despite the station being constructed on land which has been largely empty for some time. The West Coast Main Line, Chiltern Main Line, Moore Street Station, the Bull Ring, and St. Martin's Queensway would make trying to reach New Street incredibly challenging. Not impossible, but very costly. Then there's the not so small task of trying to excavate a huge cavern underneath an active and busy station. Simply constructing tunnels for the station, similar to those used for London Underground stations, would not provide a sufficiently large station which could deal with the expected passenger numbers. The New Street argument also assumes that most journeys will begin or end with passengers transferring from Curzon Street to New Street. However, if the Midlands Rail Hub is delivered, then Moore Street could provide a much more useful interchange for local travel. And of course, there's the tram link, which will allow for onward local travel. In addition, Moore Street Queensway is served by a number of bus routes. But if passengers do want to travel to New Street, then it's a leisurely 7 minute walk. I managed the walk in under 6 minutes, walking the long way around above the underpass, but the walk can be done in 5 minutes if you use St Martin's Queensway. Although I would say it does need some work to make it feel a little more safe and attractive. At the very least, lighting and signage needs to be improved. Either way, the walk from Curzon Street to New Street, even if you factor in platform to platform time, is far from the 15 or 20 minute walk that some people have tried to claim. People with mobility issues or people carrying luggage will be able to take the tram from Curzon Street to New Street, with step-free access provided from platform level to the New Canal Street tram stop beneath. 
with the station now under construction, I feel there's little point talking about what ifs. What we really need to ensure is that HS2 doesn't end at Hansacre, and somehow links can be provided that will allow trains from Manchester and Leeds to reach Curzon Street. As without phase 2, there will not be capacity to allow trains from Manchester to travel to Curzon Street, even with the Hansacre Junction connection. There may be potential to connect HS2 to the Derby to Birmingham line via the spur that would have taken HS2 trains east. This link could potentially allow trains from Leeds and the East Midlands to reach Curzon Street. Assuming there is sufficient capacity and the required existing lines were electrified from Birmingham to Derby, Sheffield and Leeds. But it goes without saying that I believe HS2 should be built in full to Leeds, the East Coast Main Line, Manchester and Goldburn on the West Coast Main Line. Just before I sign off, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon and YouTube supporters who helped make videos like this possible. If you'd like to consider supporting the channel, there'll be links in the description below. I would also like to thank the media team at HS2 Limited and Maestro Gardos for the tour of the station construction site.